Well, hello there, person. It's time to see what's new with Wraith Binder. Some fun stuff this week, and let's get right into it. The, um, the first thing here is the practice mode. And I've been thinking about a way to create a... A way to learn how to play Wraith Binder, but without holding your hand too much. This is going in the spirit of the Songbringer universe. The game Songbringer is all about not holding your hand. Um, it's like Zelda 1. If you ever played Zelda 1, the first Zelda, the very first Zelda from 1985, man, that thing never holds your hand for a second, right? It lets you explore wherever you want to go, mess up and uh, make your own mistakes, all that kind of stuff. That's really what Songbringer's about. So with Wraithbinder, I want to do the same thing, but allow players to learn. So here it is. This is practice mode. It drops you into a pretty safe place, right? This is, um, you can't access other players, even though there are other players on the map. Technically, you're just supposed to ignore them. They're not even there. Um, if you're playing, you can actually play up to four players in practice mode. So you would have your other other people on the screen or on a, on a different part of the map, but you wouldn't be on your, your part of your screen. So you're not interacting with other players, right? You're in a safe little environment where you can just fight creeps. And the first thing you get is when you get your sword, it showed up in the top left. It said, it said blade and it told me how to use it. I can press um, to swing and I can hold down the button to charge it up and let go. Right, and then as soon as you get a new another ability, I've got the second ability now, shield. Um, it tells me how to use that. It flashes the button. It keeps on flashing it. it. Keeps on telling me what what that new ability is all the way until I get another ability. So here I am, level three. And another thing about practice mode is that you just level up crazy fast. So you're just getting tons of abilities. You're getting to learn how to use all the abilities, um, and just kind of explore how the game works, you know. And then you've also got this little chest over here. Where you can, um, why the heck is the chest just not working all of a sudden? <laughs> this is so embarrassing. What? This is so weird. This is working two seconds ago. I just tested this. Wow. Yeah, I really wanted to show you this right now, person. What the hell? Oh my god. Hmm. What did I do in the last five seconds? <sighs> okay, this is really throwing me off my track here. Well, um... I guess I'm just gonna have to kind of talk about all the things instead of showing you some of these things. But um, yeah, so practice mode, this is kind of the whole concept, right? You just run through your abilities, you learn how to do things. Check this out right here. You can go and learn how to build a bridge. You can fight your way through these pillars here. I'm thinking about getting rid of these blocks, these pillars here. But you can learn how to use the Skybot. So um, it showed you how, what buttons to press there for a second, but now I'm onto a different ability. But uh, there you go. I can build a bridge, get across here fight this guy. It's kind of like a little dummy, right? You can just hit him, get tons of experience, and there you go. So another new thing this week is the meditate ability. So uh, meditate, you just hold down your button to use matter points to restore your hit points. So I'm going to hold down, oh, well, actually, let's use this debug button here. Thankfully that worked. Um, to damage myself and now I will use I'll take my 180 matter points and meditate for a while so meditation just hold it down you can even move around while you're meditating and there, that's it it's a meditate ability you can heal that way and the other two ways the other one way to heal is to go to your base and of course use your mender which all these creeps have destroyed because I've been ignoring my, my base for a second um, but my mender was right here. This is all it's it's tattered husk here um, But yeah, you can also heal at your mender or you can build more menders with the level 3 skybot So that's another thing with uh, these all these upgrades here is When you get to level 2 of an upgrade it, it shows the second step of it. So for example, let's just uh, immediately upgrade here and we're gonna get skybot and see it says new available buildings 
Uh, the first time I got that ability, it showed me what buttons to press. Now it tells me what's new with the ability at level two of the ability. So, um, so I can now have new available buildings. And if I were to go and use the Skybot button, I could see that I have mines and wards now. Mines are some of my favorite items. In fact, I'm thinking about making these level one because they're so fun. <laughs> you just basically, this is a great way to defend your base in the practice mode right here. Build a mine. As soon as a, uh, an enemy spawns there, they'll just blow up. That's fun. Um, let's meditate. Gain back some health because we don't have a mender. Okay, so on to the, the other new things this week. Um, still isn't working. Well, uh, I wanted to show you this, but basically, uh, a new thing this week. Thank you to William for this suggestion. Is um, to make a uh, these chests right here not spawn another item until you've grabbed the item that's there. Because technically, if if he's, if it spawned up a whammy, a bad item, um, you could just ignore it, right? Not pick it up, and then later, uh, after 15 seconds, this would boom spawn another item, um, or all, it would close back up and allow you to choose another item. Whoa, watch out for this guy! He's, he's explodes! Oh, he explodes! Um, so now, what happens is the chest stays open and will not allow you to get another item if there's an item on the ground near it, right? Um, so that's that's pretty neat. Great suggestion. Thank you, William. And another suggestion um, is to uh, make the acid pools for... Um, this is thanks to Peter. Peter, thank you. Um, uh, to make the acid rain pool up and get larger over time. Let's see if... Let's see if this chest is going to work on us. Yeah, spawn an acid... I swear, I just did this. Heck happened. Probably has something to do with the hold flags and all this optimizations I made to the AI system today. Come on, work. Yes, it worked that time. All right, now we got a crazy bug on my hands here. Okay, but anyways, we can see some stuff, right? Here's the acid storm. The acid storm pools now grow larger, and so if I'm standing near one and it grows larger, it will hit me. Um, there's a little bit of a slowdown issue. You can see that the, the, the frame rate's really dropping down. I know what's up here. It's basically that there's, it's spawning so many particles, right? As these acid pools drop inside these pillars, it's spawning particle, 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 particle whenever all these things get hit. So I um, need to work on that. Basically, just limit the amount of particles. But anyways, uh, so acid used to spread from entity to entity. If you got hit with acid, you'd have acid on top of your head and you got touched another entity, they would get acid too. But now, since the uh, the pools grow, grow bigger, that makes them unique versus fire, right? Fire also spreads, so I want to make them unique, right? Acid does this thing where it spreads to be a bigger pool. Fire is the thing that spreads to other entities. Uh, as you can see here, um, now we, yeah, let's show, let's show the fire too. Um, fire is a little bit improved now. Um, thanks to a suggestion from um, somebody on Twitter, shoot, I forget your name uh, right now, but, um, um, it was a great suggestion, and I, I implemented it, wrote that person back on Twitter, but basically it makes it so when the fire drops, there's some tiny little fire entities that don't do any damage, right? Before, there wasn't enough fire on the screen. It didn't seem like actual fiery, stormy rain, but now, look at this. There's tons of fire, and the bigger fire entities are the ones that damage you and cause the fire to spread, and the little entities are just visual. They're entirely visual. There's no collision. You're not going to get damage from the little ones, but they make it look like there's more fire. So it's got a neat effect, right? Um, it still allows the game to run fast, and it looks good, and it also makes it so it's a little bit more friendly as a player, right? If there were just tons of fire everywhere on the whole screen, it would be too hard, um, too punishing. But this is nice because you've got a balance between that amount of punishment and uh, the amount of visual quality. So uh, the next thing here is, well, we, see, we saw Acid Storm, Ice Storm. This is a little bit improved here, too. Ice Storms now have a nice little uh, angle to the ice. Well, this is a, shoot, snowstorm, not ice storm. Snow or ice, it's kind of the same thing, but I wanted to call it snowstorm because ice storm, you have to, it doesn't roll off the tongue as well. Ice storm, snowstorm. Snowstorm rolls off the tongue better. I like it. Kept it that way. Okay, so let's check out the snowstorm and its nice new little angle here going on. See how the... The, the, the snow is or ice is dropping at an angle and also you'll notice that when um, when they hit the ground there's also the same technique as the fire where there's some smaller 
um, ice particles and there's some bigger ice particles. And um, the bigger ice particles will actually hit the ground and bounce a little bit. And the smaller ice particles just kind of hit the ground. So again, we've got that, that nice visual quality where there's just a lot more on the screen, but yet there's not as many damaging entities because there's a lot of smaller ones. Uh, so then there's also the thunderstorm, which is just so cool. Check this out, there's chain lightning. This is probably my favorite new thing this week. Ooh, ooh, this is so sick. Watch this, watch this. Thunderstorm with the chain lightning. Here we go. So I'm gonna get the chain lightning here, or the lightning, and we'll watch it chain to different entities. So it, once it hits any entity that is a, a person, a creep, or a building, it will chain to nearby entities. Why is it not hitting me? Come on, there we go. Boom, see that? How it chained? Boom! I love it. Yeah, let's get another one going here. Oh, there, there. Okay, so here's the problem. Can't get it after we already opened it. All right, I can figure that out. Definitely has something. I I did some AI optimizations today to this types of statements right here, flags and input and behaviors and all that. So I need to check on that. Okay, let's, let's uh, start over so we can get that thunderstorm again. I'm gonna go down and we're gonna go near the dummy player, and uh, it's kind of interesting because uh, that way there's a greater chance of getting hit with lightning, so we can see that chain between uh, me and the dummy. Boom! Ah, I love it. it. Just looks so cool. And um, yeah, so chain lightning does damage, and it also is a visual effect. So. Uh, What's nice about that is that even if an entity is already invincible, like whenever an entity gets hit by some damage, it becomes invincible for like a half second. And what happened at first when I did the chain lightning is that it, the lightning didn't chain very much because there was a lot of invincibility going on. A person would get hit, like myself, would I would get hit by lightning, and it wouldn't chain to a, a nearby creep because maybe the creep already had some damage being taken. Uh, or maybe I already uh, got hit with something, some lightning a second ago, and therefore the chain, I can't get chained lightning from the creep. Well, you know, so anyways, now what it does is it visually chains to every single entity nearby. And then it, it only chains the damage to an, an entity that uh, can take damage at the current point. So, there you have it. There's a lot, there's, that's covering it all, I think. Shoot. Wow. Did I talk fast this time? It's probably still a 20 minute video, huh? Longer than I imagined. Oh yeah, okay, that's all the things. Sweet. It's only like five things that really like that are worthy to mention, but this took all week to make. So, anyways, thank you person. Thanks for watching this video. Thank you everybody for the great suggestions. And uh, we'll catch you on the next video with the next time, alright?